excited about amen today we have a special service we have a commissioning service and uh, pastor craig webb will be bringing the message for us today but uh, for, but first let's go to a promo video so could you decide as your one i don't know um the more i think about it there's a couple people that keep coming to my mind 
There's the librarian at Lilani Utka. Or there's the Hana tea worker. Oh yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Or maybe even the girl that was working at TNC. Oh. But I think I'm feeling most led to this one guy I see at the gym all the time. Oh, I think, yeah, I think like, your gym uncle, right? Yeah, the gym uncle. We see him all the time. Who is your one? Come to our train and discover for yourself what a one is. Training starts this coming Tuesday, June 1st. Don't forget to register online or in person.
And all I see is a mountain You see a mountain And as I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear For I am safe So when I climb I'll climb on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you Every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you Amen. That was amazing. Thank you, worship team. Uh, what an honor it is to be back with you. I was uh, remembering that the last time I spoke, uh, it was all still online, and the only folks that I was speaking to was the worship team uh, last time. So it's wonderful to have you all here, as well as all the folks that are still joining online. And uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here as a representative of, of your Hawaii Pacific Baptist Convention, and I bring greetings on behalf of Chris Martin, our executive director, and all of the churches of the Hawaii Pacific Baptist Convention, and what's amazing is thinking about how, you know, just the 
the breadth and the depth of the convention, not only the churches that are part of the Hawaii Pacific Baptist Convention in the Hawaiian Islands, but also down in American Samoa, as well as uh, Micronesia, and then going over to Japan and thinking about the churches there in Tokyo and Yokohama and down in Himeji, and then even over on the island of uh, Okinawa at Koza Baptist and Calvary Baptist there in Okinawa, and then jumping over to South Korea and our churches in Seoul, as well as Pyeongtaek, down ministering to the military, and then going all the way to uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and then Manila in the Philippines, and a church that was this last year when we didn't have our annual meeting, uh, the executive board provisionally received a church from Vietnam that will be part of our family and we'll get a chance to vote on them in the annual meeting this year. So it's, a, it's an honor to represent them and also to be a part of this very special service as we'll be commissioning this uh, strategic planning team today. And at the end of the message, uh, we're going to call them up and, and uh, one of our leaders is going to pray uh, over them on behalf of this church family. So let me invite you to take your scriptures, uh, whether you've got my, like my old-fashioned Bible here or it's electronic on your phone, and turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And I know 1 John is a familiar book of the Bible for this church. You just uh, focused on that during January. And we had a guest speaker here teaching on that and preaching on that. And I know Sterling has shared, Pastor Sterling shared, that this is one of his favorite books to preach on as well. So you've heard this and hopefully familiar with it. And knowing that this in 1 John, it has a, a really clear cut purpose for us, which is great for, for this time, for 2020 in 2021 is to remind us that the test that, that with, with which we can know that we are true believers. And that it's a great way for us to understand that we know that we know that we know that we belong to God. And over and over, John uh, hits that. In fact, it's in this particular chapter, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, that he reminds us what this whole book was about, where he says, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So that you may know that you have eternal life. And so this letter is all about this, this confidence that we can have knowing that we have come to know God by his grace and by his mercy and by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And having come to believe in the name of Jesus Christ, we have now belonged to him and we have this assurance. And over and over through this entire book, or some people say it's more like a sermon or more than, even more than a letter, here in 1 John, uh, John, this disciple that Jesus loved, that knew him so well and had uh, planted churches and trained leaders, he comes back here and he has this beautiful book that that tells that story over and over. And if you've studied 1 John, you know that he will give you an idea and then he'll go to another one, all supporting this main thing of knowing that we know that how we know that we are believers. And then he'll expand on it and he'll come back to it and he'll come back to it. But it's interesting here in this last chapter of 1 John, he has this special note that only appears here in 1 John chapter 5 and specifically in these two verses, verses 4 and 5, where he deals with this issue of being conquerors, being overcomers, and being victors. Now, I, I tell you, one of the great things about our walk with God as believers is when you spend time in the Word of God and you spend time in prayer, one of the things, one of the great practices of the Christian faith is learning about who God is. It's one of my favorite things to do when I pray is I'm looking at what this Bible uh, passage told me about God. I'm looking for the names of God and the descriptors of God. And it's very helpful for me in, in my walk with Him. It, it builds confidence. But you know, we also see throughout Scripture that there are multiple names or descriptors or terms that describe who we are 
as, as Christians. And so as, as, we, as we look at this passage, we're going to see conquerors, overcomers, victors. I want you to listen for this. And then I want to share some of the other terms that are given for us as believers. So, so let's look at this in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. I'll go ahead and start in verse 1. He says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. He comes back to that theme again. He says, and everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. This is how we know that we love God's children when we love God and obey his commands. For this is what love for God is, to keep his commands, and his commands are not a burden. And then here are the key verses that we're looking at. In verse 4, because everyone who's been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Let, let's pray together. God, I ask that you'd help us as we look at this passage today, that you would open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears so that we could see the things that you want us to see about ourselves that we could hear the things that you want us to hear about ourselves and that you yourself, by your Holy Spirit, would show us how we respond. God, I, I pray for myself and for my brothers and sisters, both those who are in the building and those who are watching online, that you would help us to know whether this is a word of encouragement for us or whether uh, it's a word of challenge for us. Uh, or you're, you are just helping us to see there's something that we need to change, something that we've believed that's not true that we need to change, or something we believed about you that's not true, or something that there's something about you that we don't understand that we need to understand today. I ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So here, this, this term, uh, conqueror, uh, victor, overcomer. We need to recognize it's, it's one of the descriptors that God gives us as uh, believers. And you, you think about all the different names. We, we talked about that there's different names and descriptors of God. We, we sang some of those this morning. Uh, but corresponding, there's also names and script, uh, descriptors, terms, titles that the New Testament gives to us as believers. Uh, we're called Christians. We're called children, right? Children of God, children of light, children of the day. We're called believers. We're, we're called friends of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. We're called sheep, uh, soldiers, saints uh, or holy ones, uh, witnesses, stewards, fellow citizens. We're called lights of the world. We're, we're called the elect of God, the chosen. We're called ambassadors of Christ. We're called ministers, uh, servants. Uh, we're, we're called disciples, heirs, joint heirs, branches in the vine, members of the body of Christ, uh, living stones in which the temple of God is built. Uh, we're even called living letters or epistles. Uh, we're, we're called followers, the beloved of God, temples. And, and all of these are, are giving us a definition of who we are. And a reminder that these are who we are in Jesus Christ. He has made us these things. And specifically here, we need to embrace all of those. But this is very interesting. This descriptor that he gives us here of being conquerors, of being victors, of being overcomers. Um, that's harder for us to embrace. He says here, again, I'll read it, uh, we read earlier, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, and I want you to listen for those terms, conquerors, victors, conquered, conquers, uh, because they're all from the same word. He says in verse 4, because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. And then he says, this is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. 
Who is the one who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? The word here, victory, conquers, uh, overcomers, it's all from the same uh, word. We remember that uh, uh, the New Testament was originally primarily written in the Greek language. It's Greek and Aramaic, but primarily in the Greek language. You don't have to know the Greek language in, in order to be able to study the Word of God, but there are times that it's helpful. That some of these terms, like this particular one, all, all these words are translated from the Greek word nikao. Nikao. And uh, it means to overcome. It means to conquer. It means to win. It means to defeat. It, may, it means to gain victory. And at the time that John was writing it, it was a very important uh, term in that particular uh, uh, Greek and, and Roman culture. And in fact, uh, the noun from nikao is Nike, which we get the word Nike, right? Uh, we're, we're familiar with one uh, uh, sense of that, but did you know that uh, the, the Greeks loved this word so much that they had a goddess by the name Nike? And uh, I'll show you an image here. This is an image that's in the Louvre in, uh, in Paris, and it's a huge, imposing, uh, in, imposing statue that's the goddess of victory, Nike, the goddess of triumph. And uh, a few years ago, uh, my wife Barbara and I, she was here in the uh, early service this morning, uh, we had a chance to go to Paris, and she couldn't wait to go to the Louvre, and we're in there. That place is overwhelming. We got lost in that place. We got lost with all the people that were taking selfies with the Mona Lisa. That was a little weird. But we came around the corner, and we were coming up these stairs, and we looked up, and we saw this huge, imposing statue. I can't tell you how big. It was just huge that was the winged goddess of victory, Nike. And, and you can see that uh, for, for the Greeks, they just they idolized this idea of victory. But you know what's interesting is that in their religion, in this the false uh, uh, pagan religion, they believed that only their Greek gods could actually really have victory and be overcomers. They're, they're the only ones that, that, that could have this. They said, well, sometimes a, a, a mere mortal could have a victory, but most of, most of your life was going to be failure. I, I sort of experienced this myself just yesterday. We had the, of course, it was Saturday. It was a, a day for rest and adventure. And so my wife and I had talked to my daughter, who uh, is a student at UH. She'll be a junior this fall. And uh, she got, had gotten kicked out of the dorm, and so she moved into an apartment downstairs from us, which has been great. But we really, we like to hang out with her. She doesn't always like to hang out with us, but we like to hang out with her. And so we persuaded her. We hung out the day, and we had great adventures during the day. I was worn out by the end of the day. And then she came up the stairs and said, Dad, he said, would, she said, would you take me surfing? Now, I'm not a surfer. The closest that I get is that I have a 9 foot 6 inch, I don't know what is it, 33 inch wide stand up paddle board that I will adventure out into the bay at Ala Moana that's on a really good day as long as there's no ripples, right? And even then, my sense of victory is to be able to paddle half the way across without doing the, you know, and just falling in when I lose my balance. That's a great thing. But Gracie has taken up uh, surfing and surfed with her college friends, and she's getting good at it. And, but all of them are gone. She didn't, and we're like, don't go surfing by yourself. So she wants me to go. So we go out to a place called Rock Piles which the reason it's called rock piles is because it's shallow and she basically described there's a certain way you have to fall and by the way it's painful the way you have to fall and it's out in front of uh, the the prince hotel out there near, near the marina by uh, on the other past of magic island and so we go out there and it is nothing like ala moana with the right 
I mean, there's waves out there, and, but she wants me to go out there, and I want to go out to make sure to watch over her. She's watching over me now, right? And we get out. I catch some waves. I did a lot of falling, and we get out way out to where all the real surfers are, right? And there's some big waves coming, and she tells me, she said, Dad, don't try to catch those waves, and yet, what do I do? I see this big wave coming. I'm thinking, I've got those small waves. Now, let me tell you, I never stood up this entire time. I'm on my knees on my stand-up paddleboard with my paddle. And so I'm paddling. This wave is coming. And the way that Gracie describes it, because she watched it from behind with horror, that she sees this big wave coming. She sees me vigorously rowing, and all of a sudden she sees the nose go down. Is that a good thing in surfing? No. The nose goes down. I go over. There's a big wave coming. I start tumbling. What she describes was my surfboard, this 9-foot, 6-inch, 33-inch wide boat, goes flying in the air, and she sees it pull my leg, right? But I'm still here to tell about it, aren't I? Now, that wasn't victory, was it? And when John is describing this victory, that's not the type of victory he's talking about. He, he's not saying that if you're in Christ, you're going to be able to surf and, and catch every wave and not fall. He's not even saying that your finances are always going to be right. He's not even saying here that your children are going to be perfect. He's not even saying that you're always going to have the, the perfect health, is he? He's, he's not saying that. What he's describing here is something that, that happens, this, this victory that he gives us, this conquering that he gives us, through Jesus Christ. And it's something beyond the simple matter of thinking that we get everything right. He, he's not even saying that as a, a conqueror, as an overcomer, that you're never going to sin as a believer. That you're never going to have bad thoughts. That you're never going to have stupid things that come out of your mouth that ruin relationships. That you're never going to get things wrong so let's look at what he's describing. <laughs> I think the very first thing that we have to understand is that when we talk about being overcomers, and this is the same thing that we sung about, is that he, this term, first of all, is used of Jesus himself. And I can't talk about being an overcomer or being a victor uh, or being a conqueror without talking about who it is that's the real overcomer and conqueror. Because in, in uh, John chapter 16, uh, John is writing this in his great gospel where he says in John chapter 16 verse 33, uh, the, these are Jesus' words and he, Jesus uses this same Greek word. He says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. He says, you will have suffering in this world. He says, be courageous. I have conquered. I have overcome the world. Now, Jesus is the one who is the ultimate victor. <laughs> Jesus is the one who is the ultimate conqueror. He is God come in the flesh who made that victory, who purchased our victory on the cross with his blood. And Jesus, who's describing this, then in Paul, in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, he says, knowing all these things, he describes that we're conquerors, but in this time, he uses the term, he says, we are more than conquerors through him, through Jesus, who loved us. We have faith in Christ, and when we are in Christ, when we came to know him, we enter into this state of being unconquerable because of Jesus Christ. Uh, he also, uh, in Romans chapter 8, uh, one of our favorite passages uh, we know is Romans chapter 8, and especially there in verse 38 and 9, 39, because he says, 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor anything present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other all-created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're getting at what is this victory? What is this conquering that we have? So I want to give you three basic things in terms of understanding what it means that that we as believers, that this church family, as they enter into this strategic planning season, to know that we already have the victory in this. That we as the believers, the members of this church that make up this church body here, as we look towards the future knowing that we already have the victory in Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, the first thing that means, you can write this down, is that by Jesus Christ, we have overcome, we have conquered, we have victory over Satan. (laughs) We have we have we've overcome, we have conquered, we have victory over the evil one, over the deceiver. This is, this is so critical for us as believers. Because here's the, here's the scenario. Here we are walking with Christ. We spend time reading his word. We pray. We practice. Uh, fellowship with other believers. These are the disciplines. Uh, We give generously. Uh, We're doing this under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It's part of who we are as believers. We're identified as God's children. We've been forgiven. So we have all this, uh, this identity of who we are in Christ, and we're going along in the, in our real life, and all of a sudden, we do something stupid or something dumb comes out of our mouth. Any of you guys? Yep. Yeah. You guys, raise your hands. Dumb things come out of your mouth. All right. At least a couple of you. All right. Or thoughts come in. And what happens? The evil one, the deceiver, the accuser of brothers will say, you're not a real Christian. You're not really forgiven. You can't serve God. You, you have no business of calling yourself a Christian. You hear those accusations. It's one of the names that's given to Satan is the accuser, the deceiver. And what, what John wants us to know here is that because we are in Christ, we have overcome Satan. Uh, this is in 1 John, this, this, this same book, but over in chapter 4, verse 4. He says, you are from God, little children. There's a beautiful way that he describes us. Basically, the term means the born ones, those who've been born of God. You are from God, little children, and you have conquered them because the one who is in you, who's that? Jesus Christ is greater than the one who's in the world. That's the deceiver. That's the devil. That's Satan. And when we believe the truth of God's word, especially as it relates to who God is and his power, and we believe the truth of God's word and what it says about us and our identity in Christ, then we defeat Satan's lies. And as, As this church enters into uh, a strategic planning and starting to think about, okay, how are we as this church that, that meets as we gather here in this uh, very strategic location, how is this church going to impact a lost community that is not thinking about Jesus? How are we going to do that? How are we going to impact the whole world? And it's very easy for us to think, oh, we can't do it. Is that the voice of God? Is that the voice of Satan? When we look at the Word of God, we see that we have His power. We have His strength, both for for me as an individual, for my family, for my church family, and as we gather together as a network of families for what God wants to do for His kingdom to see people come to Christ. 
we overcome. We've overcome Satan. Uh, the second thing is that by Jesus Christ, uh, we overcome death. We overcome sin. We overcome the law. I don't, I don't have time to unpack all of this, but I'm have you write down a scripture. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, starting in verse 54 all the way through 58, uh, where, where Paul deals with this issue of the, the victory that we have because of Jesus Christ over death, which helps us to lead out in confidence. We, we no longer live in fear of death because he has overcome sin. Because we, we are in Christ, we have eternal life in Him. And it brings us, that's part of our victory. Uh, it's right there in the middle of that passage in verse 55 where it says, Where death is your victory, where death is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory because of Jesus Christ. Uh, we have triumphed over the law. Uh, it's in Romans chapter 6, verse, verse 14, where it says, For sin will not rule over you because you are not under the law, but under grace. <laughs> Every time we come back to our identity in Christ, uh, we, we hear that voice saying, Oh, yeah, I know. I know some other believers who are victorious and they're conquerors and they can't be conquered, but not me. The, the word is saying, for every one of us who's born of God, we've believed in the name of Jesus Christ. We've been filled by his Holy Spirit, and he's saying, this is who you are. Not only am I a child of God, not only am I his servant, we, we like that. I know um, one of the things I love to do when I pray is I think about who, who I am, I think about who God is, I think about God as my father, right? And so I think, okay, God, I'm your son. And because of that, I have certain privileges of coming and asking you for things. I don't just come and say, oh, God, I need you to do this. No, I come and say, God, I know because of the blood that was shed for me that you have adopted me as your son. And so when I come and I ask you for these things, I know that you're a good father. And I know that you want to provide for me. I know you want to help take care of my family. And so I'm asking you as my father and I'm coming as your son bought with the precious blood of Christ. Would you do this for me? Often when I'm working on things in my role with, uh, uh, with Hawaii Pacific Baptist Convention, there's things that can get overwhelming for me. And I recognize that my identity sometimes when I'm praying is I'm talking to God as my master. He's my master and I'm identifying myself as a servant of God. And so I go to God and say, God, this, this work that I'm doing, it's overwhelming, but I just want to remind you, God, this is your work. You are the master. You own it, and I'm just your mere servant. And I feel like you've called me to do this, so God, I need you to provide the money for this project. I need you to provide the people for this project. I need you to give me the energy because I'm getting weary of doing this. God, as your servant, uh, and you're my master, would you do this? And he's reminding us in the same way that we may be able to identify ourselves with that, is saying also you and your church family, you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And, and, and the third thing is that by Jesus Christ, we have overcome the world. I'll read verse 4 and 5 again. Uh, he's, he's, he talks about the world over and over again. He says, so everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. And then he says, this is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you notice three different times he describes that as overcomers, we have overcome the world. One of the struggles in the last, what, 14, 15 months that we've been in this, this uh, strange pandemic, 20, 20 and 21, 
is that it sure seems like we have been under the burden and the weight and the crush of the world. And when I talk about the world, I'm talking about the world system, the way the world thinks. We're not talking about a biblical worldview. We're, we're talking about other philosophies that are out there, other political things that have, it felt like it has crushed us. Has anyone felt like that in the last year and a half? Uh, confusion, right, about, okay, we do this or we do this. Who do we listen to? That's all out in the sphere of the world, and it's revealed how much, I don't know about for you, but for me, how much I have relied on the affirmation and relied on the information and relied on everything that comes from the world and all it could offer. And here, John is reminding us that that is not where we get our life from. It's not where our citizenship is. And so he says, through Jesus Christ, we have victory over the world. And I'll tell you that this last year, all the times that I have felt victory over the world where is when I would go back and I would spend significant time reading God's Word, I would spend significant time, and my practice is, is that I have to write my prayers out when I pray. I get too scatterbrained. I can't, I can't concentrate. You know, someone says, I can't concentrate for, I can't concentrate for 15 seconds in, pray, in prayer unless I'm writing it down. That doesn't seem good, but that's just how it is. So I've spent significant time writing out God, I feel overwhelmed by this. And basically saying I'm feeling overwhelmed by, by the world. And as I laid those out before him, you know what would happen? Is my confidence would shift from the confidence in all the things around me. Whether it's bank accounts or the political system or any of that. And it would shift to knowing who I am and who he is. And it shifts my confidence. The very same thing is true as a gathered people of God thinking in terms of what, how are we going to move forward as a church to impact lostness, to disciple the next generation of believers? How are we going to do that and not feel crushed by all the things that the world says we can't do or what we don't have? It's by confidence in him as the overcomer and also understanding who we are. Every, not just the leadership in this church, but every believer. Uh, every believer that's older, every believer that's younger, that learns and has confidence, has confidence in him. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, He has rescued us from the domain of darkness, and he has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. I, I can't imagine a better message for, for me and for us as believers and for this church family than knowing that Satan can never defeat me, that death, sin, and the law can never defeat me, that the world can never defeat me. I'm a conqueror. I, I would encourage you right now, just in, in your heart, you don't have to say this out loud, but just in your heart, would you confess to God what the Word says? Just in your heart, would you say, I'm a conqueror. Would you say in your heart, I'm a victor. I'm a victor. You can confess, it's, God, it's not in me, it's only in Christ. But in Christ, I am a conqueror. Would you, just in your heart, would you confess that to him? I'd love to, to offer a prayer for this church and for myself and for all of us uh, before... Um, 
before we call up the, the group. Would you, would you bow in prayer with me as we pray together? We, we do address you as our heavenly Father, and we know that you're a good Father, a provider, a guide. We recognize you, God, as Master. Uh, we recognize you as Jesus, as the, the one who is the ultimate overcomer, and that in Christ we are more than victors, more than conquerors, more than overcomers. And we recognize that. We confess that to you today. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you have done in us. God, I, I pray for uh, anybody in this room or anybody that's watching online that may have, uh, as I talked about these, that may have just in their heart recognized that they don't know Jesus Christ. They have not responded in faith to your call to salvation. And I pray that even now, they would ask you, God, would you help me? That they would confess, God, I do believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I do believe that you love me and I confess that I'm a sinner and I just ask that you would forgive me and wash me clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that they would do that right now. God, I thank you, and I pray for this church family, for the impact that they will make, and I pray this in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let me invite all of the, uh, the strategic planning committee that's here to come forward, and then we'll have someone that will be uh, praying uh, for you as a dedication, as a commissioning prayer. We're going to take some time to reach out our hands and pray for the people who are going to be doing our strategic planning, our teams, and um, just really making sure we're getting the gospel out there as a church family. And so let's take some time. Reach your hands out online, in person, and let's pray for these people. Lord, we thank you that we are conquerors, victors in you, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And we know that during this time, it will be a challenging time where, where outside voices are coming in when we are planning to do your work, your will, in moving your church forward, Lord. We want to be open to hear your voice. We thank you that, that you want to speak to us, Lord. And so we pray for our strategic planning teams to be listeners, to hear your voice clearly, to block out all that is not of you. We declare your peace and your discernment over our teams. We thank you for their willing hearts, Lord. They want to hear from you. We are expectant. And this time is so exciting to hear where you want to lead us, Lord. We trust you that you are going to speak clearly and loudly to our teams, Lord. We thank you for each one of these people who are just dedicating their time to discern and, and hear you out. We are expectant. We are excited. We want to hear from you, Lord. Give us clarity. Give them clarity. Give them wisdom. And if it's courage too, Lord, I just pray for that as well. Thank you that you are a good father. And we know you have good things in store, Lord. We pray whatever your plans are, it will bring you glory and your gospel message of hope 
through Jesus will go to the nations, Lord. In your name we pray, amen.
Let this song of blessing be a church, be a prayer to our church as we go into this strategic planning in hopes that we can reach the community for a thousand generations to come. happy that you folks joined us for worship today in person and online um, just keep your strategic planning teams in prayer in the next few weeks and we just thank you pastor craig for the message as well um, 
And just to know that we are conquerors, victors in Christ, let's go out there and just really talk to people, share the, the love of hope with others. Thank you for joining us. And remember, don't leave until your usher excuses you for the people who are in person.